What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Levon Kaysen, and I'm back again with another interview. And this is a special, special guest. He's been on Weapon Wheel Podcast. He's doing his own thing with his own podcast, the the Writer's Block. Please welcome Kids Move. What's up? What's up, Levon? How you doing? Yeah, it's been going fine. So I'm hearing that you might come back to Weapon World Podcast. Is that true or <laughs> troll? No, I'm not. I'm not trolling. It's yeah. Yeah, I'll be back in the next week. I think uh, it's off this week, but I'll be back next week. So you just need to take a little time off from there because of what happened or. Um, um I don't know. I, I kind of didn't really announce or anything like that like after everything um happened i would i would the last thing on my mind was if i should go back on or if i'm going back on i, I didn't announce that i wasn't going back i just decided all right whatever I'll you decided to take on a break. <laughs> yeah it wasn't even a break it wasn't even like scheduled or anything like that i was just like whatever you know what i mean i'm not uh messing with these dudes right now so i'll just i'm a lay low focus on my own stuff mm-hmm but uh, what gets you to write some of your raps? Like you made some comedic raps, like some memorable lines. Are they comedic or are you taking it as comedic? <laughs> I'm taking it as comedic. Uh, man, um, there's, uh, are you referring to anything or are you just referring to just the songs in general? Just the songs in general. Ah, uh, I get bored and, um, you know, Sometimes when I'm not gaming, um, I got two loves. Uh, other than my love, love, I I got two loves after that. Other, it's uh, video games and it's music. And sometimes uh, the gaming, the games aren't out. The good, the games aren't good enough, or the gaming news are it's dry. You know, it's like I feel inspired to tell a story, or I want to, I don't know, I want to do something fun. I have to keep people entertained on my channel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, somehow, somehow, somehow. Okay. Uh, interesting. What interesting. did you learn from being in the crime side, this community as a whole? Like, what did you learn from it? Um, honestly, I didn't learn like squat from being in the um, crumb side because you don't learn anything from the crumb side. So that's why you try to stay out of it. Um, but the crumb side uh, is un- uh, unavoidable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's the crumb side that a uh, uh, that so what I'm looking for that accuses accuses you of not playing games, but if you look and, and you see um, the crumb side, it's the crumb side that doesn't uh, play video games. It's it's just it's just that if I, if I learned anything is that it's just it's just the the negative and and, and negative always speak. You see more negative than you see positive, and um, the, the crumb side is is how can I say it, it's influencing um, from people and, and it's never going to go away. There's no way to change it. It's just finding ways to avoid it or coming up with something that you can do that make you stand out and be better than, than a pack. Mm-hmm. Crumb yeah. side like crabs, you know? Yeah. Hot crabs don't let each other go. You know, so. mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what made you get into Xbox? Like, what made you get into Xbox as your preferred platform and stuff like that? Um, well, X. I wasn't a fan of the original Xbox. Um, before I was a, a console fanboy, I was a game fanboy. Like, I liked uh, SmackDown over any other wrestling game. I liked um, Ratchet and Clank over like mario or whatever xbox had um Mm -hmm. i liked the getaway over grand theft auto even though grand theft auto was more of a playstation game than anything else i was a getaway (laughs) person um x what happened with xbox is that me the three the 360 came out when i was 15 or 16 i was working like a summer job and i can it would be the first console i could buy with my own money that um i can for and i saved up for and i wanted the xbox 360 because remember coming off playstation and gamecube i wasn't gaming online my friend was on xbox mm-hmm. and then people who were on pc they were already gaming online 
So I didn't know what it was like. I just knew it was fun. He was telling me it was fun. I wanted to experience Halo. I played it, I experienced it, but I couldn't call it mine. And I was like, man, when they drop another one, like I am on it. So once that gaming former, I think it was Electronic Gaming Monthly, I think broke the story on the Xbox 360. And I've been, I've subscribed to every gaming magazine since uh, the first image leaked. So just so I can get more news and then um, I was buying like the $20 E3 before it, uh, um, the E3 DVDs and stuff like that. And, um, it was just, I wanted, uh, the, what did it for me was seeing, uh, the Gears of War, um, the first, demo, one. the first one. Yeah. And I was like, man, I was like, so Halo three. And I was like, in this new game called Gears of War and then just being online, I, I just couldn't imagine online gaming. So Xbox 360 was my first, my introduction to online gaming. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was, I went all out. I, I I bought it day one. I saved up, saved up all my money. I used to work at D'Angelo's and I had a summer job, saved up all my money, bought the, five, uh, <laughs> bought the $400 20 gig uh, version. And I bought eight launch games and an mm -hmm. extra controller with really? it. Yeah, and I went through three of them through the Red Ring of Death, and I just kept buying them until they shrunk it. And I, I had, I had about like seven Xbox 360s just through them getting smaller, up until they came out with um, the Xbox One. So. Did you get the Slim? I got uh, of the 360. Yes, I got the Slim. I had, oh, I had, okay. I had a couple Slims. I had a couple Slims. Mm -hmm. uh, are you getting that Xbox Scorpio or no? Uh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's six teraflops. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm getting it regardless. Going to, um, cost. It's I think it's gonna be upwards of five hundred dollars. You don't think it's gonna be higher than that? Um, I say seven hundred. I don't think it's gonna be a seven um seven hundred. Even though it's gonna be sold as a premium, I say I say I won't. I'd be surprised if it becomes higher than six hundred dollars. I think it's going to be somewhere between five or six hundred dollars. If it's seven hundred dollars, I probably will still find a way to get it. So uh, okay, you enter it. What do you think of Nintendo and Pokemon Go? Like Pokemon. Go. Hmm? What do I think of Nintendo? Mm hmm. And Pokemon Go. Well, Nintendo, like I said, um, I grew out of Nintendo. I was a Nintendo fan. Like I said, before Xbox, before I was on Xbox, my the only consoles I was gaming on was PlayStation 2 and GameCube. And then before PlayStation 2, I only had Nintendo consoles uh, prior to that. Um, Pokemon Go is, I think it's, it's good for Nintendo. It's good for those who grew up with Pokemon, um, that nostalgia just came back. It gave Nintendo, a, it's a positive light to Nintendo. They found a way they could make money. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a mobile thing. It, it's a cool concept, but um, let's just see how long it'll last. But uh, Pokemon is, is a success. Am I a fan of it? I mean, I play it, but I'm not on. I'm not into it like where my life is in danger when I'm playing it. But um, no, it's, it's cool. It, it's a it's a cool concept. I'm happy for Nintendo that they were able to come up with something that can uh, get everybody. That can get a lot of people um onto it and it's, it could be something that's trending um and it's something to take light away from the the, the failures like their mm -hmm. their recent consoles yeah <sighs> what do you think of the upgradable consoles um i i don't think any of them because i don't know of any of them that exists like are you talking about are you talking about are you referring to the scorpio yeah, and neo yeah, or yeah um well, as we know about the Neo, I don't look at the, I don't look at the Neo as an upgrade. Um, being that I, I don't know if you was following when I did the video when I when the specs when I had the specs and I was telling everybody what's inside the Neo and everybody ignored it until now. And these recent leaks came out, which confirms what I was saying was correct. Um, it's the PlayStation Neo. Like I said, if I'm going to get a PlayStation, it would be uh, if I rebuy a PlayStation, it would be a Neo because it. It only makes sense, but I, I honestly don't think Sony is. I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, so with the Neo, but if it comes out, um, I'll be interested in it, and I and I will likely get it, um, just because I do sometimes miss having my PlayStation for uh, certain games. Um, uh, I I do like the idea of the uh, uh, upgrade or the mid gen upgrades. 
And I remember I wanted to give a shout out to Bites of Chicken. He the maker, he's the maker of Gear Gauntlet. And he remember I remember like I think it was last year, he was like, What if the well, the consoles were like cell phones and like every couple of years they were upgraded? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, um, I think that would be stupid. I was like, I was like, the only way that would work or be successful is if every game was forward and backwards compatible. That means every game I buy now better work day one on whatever thing they knew they got. So I don't feel like I'm out of the loop. He brought it up. He was genius for that. I I commend on him on that. But I mean, it's it, it, it's about to be reality. Um, I think it's cool. We never had something like that in consoles. But if you think about it, our computers are like that. Our cell phones are like that. Our tablets yes, are, are like that. Everything is like that, but consoles. So yes, they are. The technology is changing every day. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What's going to be the future of the gaming in industry? Uh, the future of the gaming industry. Um, well, as long as, as consoles are here to stay, I'm going to be happy. You know what I mean? I'm a console gamer. I can't imagine gaming on any gaming any other way. I'm not even sold on VR uh, like that. So if VR can remain as it is and not like something that takes over gaming, I'll be happy. Okay. Um, what games are you looking forward to for the rest of the year in 2017? 20, um, what's coming out in 2017 again? Um, for the rest of the year, I've already pre-ordered all the games that I'm interested in. I'm definitely interested in, interested, I can't even speak, in Titanfall 2. Um, um, I can't wait to, to see how that is in comparison. Um, hopefully it, la it lasts. Um, Gears of War 4, definitely. Um, I, I purposely don't watch anything on Gears or read up on anything on Gears so I can keep the, su the surprise factor there and that I can enjoy it to its fullest without being spoiled. Um, I like, I'm definitely interested, um, I'm looking forward to Forza Horizon 3. I think it's going to be, again, best racer um, of the generation. Um, what else is there that I got? Recore. Recore, I think, is going to be so underrated uh, what it may uh, potentially become. And I'm looking forward to that. It's at a great price point. Um, I hope a lot of people buy it. Uh, as far as, uh, and then the other games I'm, I'm borderline is uh, maybe Mafia 3. The games in 2017, mm -hmm. the only game I think I'm really waiting for in 2017 is um, Scalebound and Sea of Thieves. I'm not really a Halo Wars fan. So. Really? No, I'm not into I'm not into RTSs. Mm. What was your first system, like your first gaming system? Uh, my first gaming system was a Super Nintendo, because yeah, because my uncles they had the Sega, and so the Super Nintendo was mine. Um, yeah, Super Nintendo. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was your favorite game as a child? Favorite game as a child. Mm. Well, <laughs> um, it would. It, I know this is like probably the most common answer, but I don't know. It's just, I'm going by. It. I didn't have like the greatest collection of games when I was younger, but it would. My my favorite game it was Super Mario All Stars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when can we expect your next single, like your rap singles and stuff like that? Um, I don't know when it's done. I do. I put out a song like every other day. I try not to flood uh, my channel with just content because I don't want to turn off the people that came here for gaming. Um, uh, so I I probably do one every one one once a week. I might put out another one. I don't know sometime next week. Um, so it, I I don't know. I don't really do it in with. I just kind of just do it and if i feel like it's good enough to share and then i share it and i feel like if it's not good enough to share it i share it anyway to see what people say so mm -hmm. so i've been noticing you've been going political on twitter like socially active mm -hmm. um i've always been socially aware of uh, dating back to my days in middle school i always follow politics i always follow history um but uh, and I all and I always uh, and then lately I always uh, I started to follow conspiracies. So uh, like what kept me away from it before it was I, I was just always 
conflicted because I didn't know what was real or fake, mm-hmm. was true or not. And um, but I, I and politics uh, still holds a place. I mean, being social, being socially aware and seeing what's wrong and um and, and what's and what's not and whatnot. So like and just seeing things that if it impact if I feel like it has a strong enough impact and I feel a, a certain way about it, I feel like I need to speak on it. And of okay. course, with all the stuff that's going on with uh, police brutality and uh, the crime, the violence, not just going on in America, but the violence is going on internationally. I think it's, 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 a, it's a telling time and I think it shouldn't be ignored. You think, and, you think police brutality is going to end or? Uh, no, police brutality would never end because police brutality has always been around. It's just that now that we got social media, um, cell phones, camera phones, we're, we're finally seeing it. But believe it or not, don't be fooled. It's not it's not what the media is telling you uh, it, it is. We don't have a race problem. We don't have a, 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 a big police brutality problem because the stats will show you that we don't. And I think what the media is doing is they're trying to create tension between us as a people. Um, and mm-hmm. people will say, oh, well, well blacks, we're at, right now we're united. We're not. Um, the problem is we shouldn't be united as a race. We should be united as a, a people and we shouldn't let uh, the media or whatever it is uh, try to pit us against each other. Um, Cause at the end of the day, you know, if I get shot dead, I don't want my my death to be pu- publicized only if a cop does it or a white cop does it. Mm-hmm. If, if I get shot by a black, uh, black cop, publicize it. If I get shot by an Asian cop, publicize it. If I get shot by another black guy for no reason, just because he wanted to rob me or something like that, mm-hmm. publicize it. I don't want my death, my, I don't like speaking like that. I don't want murders, wrongful murders and deaths shouldn't be ignored because it's expected because uh, the bur- because who the killer was. Yeah. But if we're only going to put attention on murders that happen from white cops, which if you think about it, just I don't mean to turn this interview into like a social injustice thing. You know, yeah, people we it was it was a it's been a horrible week, a horrible couple of weeks. It's been a horrible year when it comes to violence and stuff. But if you think about it, you know, really? what about last year? Huh? What about last year? It was bad, too. We ain't wearing crazy times. But if you think about it, we had two um, we had two murders, you know, two um, 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 black folks were uh, killed, wrongfully killed. They were murdered. I, I say they were uh, murdered by Aaron Sterling cops. or whatever. You said what? Aaron Sterling. Or oh, yeah, Erlen, um, Erlen Ster- Damn. I, Alan, Erlen Ster- Sterling and um, uh, uh, Philando. They were they were murdered. Their murders took place in two different cities and two different states and the whole nation reacted mm-hmm. and now you got a person gets killed by a cop in baton rouge one get killed by a cop in minnesota unrelated mm-hmm. they just happen it just they happen to die by cops mm-hmm. and now you know when that whole protest happened cops getting killed in dallas i'm like it makes no sense you know what i mean at the end of the day you know what i mean i would understand in the event if that took place in the communities where those brothers were killed, it would I, at least would make sense. I don't condone violence. I don't the violence uh, to stop violence doesn't make sense. The violence doesn't end violence. So, it, uh, but I would under at least have an understanding because at the end of the day, after all these cops are there now getting killed in retaliation, the cops that actually committed the murders are still walking free and alive, and they're not harmed at all. So it makes no sense. I, I'm not really with this whole. This lives matter a movement be and I'm not all, matter. you know any of those lives matters because they're all are done to like put people against each other and I'm not with the um uh oh we uh, we don't need cops because like I said I'd rather cops over martial law any day I was like the day you guys uh, the day you get um cop you get rid of cops is the day you know the military is the police and you've seen what happened in Turkey so and. Yeah. So it's, it's stupid. What are some of the future plans of your channel? Um, I always uh, wonder if I should make another channel for different things, but um, I'm too lazy for that. I like to keep being that that one stop 
shop for everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't I don't have any plans. I mean, right now we're doing a Tick Writers Block podcast, which has been which has been great. Um, we've I got my music, I got my gameplay, I got my 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 vlogs that I do at uh, when I'm on lunch or in the morning and whatnot. So I don't have anything different planned. I just hope to keep uh, to be able to keep um, putting out good content that people can watch, like, and and be and be me. I've been consistent since I came on YouTube, and that's one thing um, nobody can really say about me. Is I've always been consistent. You can go back yeah. three years. You see, my yeah, videos are always been. Consistent. Yeah. Oh. Um, do you think Xbox gets a bad reputation of its fan base? Like the Xbox fan, do you think the Xbox fan base gets a bad rap? The Xbox fan base gets a bad rap. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but Sony's fan base got a bad rap uh, last gen uh, um as well. Um, and it's like I said, fanboys. Uh. This is the craziest generation for fanboys, you know what I mean? So only because we got mm -hmm. social media back in PlayStation 2 days, Xbox days, um, it, it it wasn't bad. It's just like, you know, we had our preferences, but it was really more game versus game. You know what I mean? When we had when we like, for example, when you had your Madden fans versus your 2K fans versus your game day fans and stuff like that, um, Xbox fans get a bad rap because over because people overreact. Um, a lot of people over uh, react to what Xbox fanboys do, and some Xbox fanboys overreact to what PlayStation um, fans do. Um, and if people stop overreacting, wouldn't care. Like we should stop caring about what somebody says. Like I, 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 I never understood why people dislike the fact that I was a fan of something where I speak highly of something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or, or, or something. So Xbox fanboys, they get a bad rap for just being, for, for speaking. They get a bad rap because uh, they, there, there are no, there is zero tolerance, no nonsense group. And it, no matter how idiotic or how professional, whatever things sound, they don't care. They're going to say it and, and they're going to stick by it. Yeah. Um, so, and I think in this, I don't like how it says like a Xbox fans get a bad rap off of those fanatic um, extreme fans get a bad rap when they say it. it's just that the Xbox size is amplified, and a lot of people has to have this grudge against um, um, Xbox guys for a moment. Hold on, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Let me call you back. I'm um, talking to my uh, homeboy Levon. <laughs> you heard me? Let me let me call you back. I'm talking to my homeboy Levon. Mm. <laughs> Not ignored, but uh, I uh, just let me call you back. All right, thank you. All right, everyone loves Sony right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if everybody loves Sony or just everybody wants to be a part of. It. I we live in this is the what you call the 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 lunchroom generation. I don't know. You you're in, you're in high school now, right? Or mm -hmm. you. Yeah, and I'm, I don't know if high school is still the same, but you know how you know it's lunchtime. There's lunch tables. You feel comfortable sitting at lunch tables. I was the type of kid that just kind of swap tables. You know what I mean? Yes. But there were some tables. Yeah. You know, the same people sat at and they gossip at. You know what I mean? It's just it's just lunch room. Some people need to feel a part of the in crowd, and because the popular thing is to uh, diss Xbox fans or to diss the Xbox console, a lot of people stir to that because that's what's getting views, that's what's getting mm -hmm. likes, that's what's getting the push. So it's the easy, it's the easiest. I could have easily said, you know what? Remember, I came on YouTube right, uh, right, like at like during the Titanfall time. It was I could have easily said, oh, PlayStation is the wave. I'm going to jump on that wave. You know what I mean? But I'm a I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fanboy. If you want to uh, call me that, so like I, I can't pretend to like something that I don't like. You know. PlayStation, like I said, PlayStation at once was my preference. You know what I mean? And yeah. when, like I said, since I got on Xbox, I told myself from 2000, uh, I got an Xbox in 2000 when it came out, but in 2006, after Gears of War came out, I said, no, I was like, whatever Xbox put out next, I am there day one. There's no way I can leave this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It just, so, like I said, it's, um, it's all about people trying to find a place to fit in. Trying to it's act cool. cool. They need yeah. There's it's it's the it's the it's the lunch room effect. Um, and it's just people trying to fit in. So that's why I was like, all this hate 
and this dislike towards Xbox or Xbox fanboys isn't really isn't real hate or or real dislike. It's just a cool thing to do now. Eventually, that's gonna fade. You know, the Xbox Scorpio is about to take uh, number two on the Neo, and and in mm-hmm. the PS, the, in the PlayStation, at least that console will be the thing to diss once Scorpio come out, and and you'll and you'll start seeing some flip floppers. Uh, mm-hmm. How on the train like how they was on PlayStation? It's it's or so Nintendo. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it could be the same effect with Nintendo as well. Same, uh, I don't, I don't know what Nintendo can do, but Nintendo, like I said, Nintendo has a a, a different fan base, and um, Nintendo, I don't, I when it, when you think of console war, you just don't think of you think of Sony uh, and Microsoft. Yeah, okay. you think Sony and Microsoft, you don't think of Nintendo. And somehow PC somehow gets in it. They feel like they have to be in the mix, um, but Nintendo, it just, I don't never look at Nintendo as a threat. I don't think I've ever uh i don't think i've ever gotten to a debate with a nintendo repping like fanboy or anything like that it just mm-hmm. never happened and, and believe it or not they're your heart it's hard to find nintendo fanboys especially on youtube if you want to get them on a podcast or something like that there's not a lot of them and it's because yeah. a lot of nintendo's player base isn't uh isn't our age and if they are age they're like you know look at as a as, as, as weird you know so. and child autism no, nah, no, that's messed up. No, no, no. But anyways, who who do you admire in in you on YouTube? Who I admire on YouTube? Yeah, myself. Oh <laughs> uh, no, no, no! Here's the thing. Um, there's a lot of people I like on YouTube, and, and a lot of people don't uh, believe me. But there's people. Here's the difference. I don't. I I, I don't have a lot of people that I guess that like me. Mm-hmm. for whatever the things either where i stand on youtube or xbox or whatever or or just my, my opinion not being the popular one um but there's people i admire that probably don't even like me or i just got on youtube watching you know what i mean i mean i agree with some of the people that i've been a fan of but i, I don't even want to use the word admire you know what I mean? But like mm-hmm. I said, no matter who you are as a person, sometimes I could care less who you are as a person. But if I enjoy your content, I enjoy your content. You know what I mean? Like people may not like me as a person, but they may like my content. People may hate my content and like me as a person. So yeah, vice versa. Yeah. So, for example, like, believe it or not, I like um, I have always uh since i knew youtube was a place to go for freaking gaming the, the, when I, the, it was only three people i was watching on youtube for a while or three three and a half four and a half and that was next gen 720 broken games red dragon and then i think i i, I found crap gamer those were the, the rotation of people videos i would just watch and watch a while these consoles were coming out or right before they were coming out i would just watch their stuff and just and just watch it i didn't develop a personal feeling for any of the people i just thought that the content was good um like uh and i found showstopper and everything um and then now as as i realized that youtube had a, a much larger community i uh, opened myself up to the likes of like stone fox uh, media um there was who else do i because uh, people like i said i started out but a lot of people i just mentioned don't actually I don't think actually like me, you know what I mean? As a, um, um, it doesn't like, don't like me, but as for our, as, as far as content, I can tell you, uh, when it comes to content, I, I don't, um, I haven't watched anything from Mooch in a little bit. I think, I hope, and I think he still does the videos, but I did, I do like Mooch's content. I think he has mm-hmm. uh, great content. As Like I said, say what you want to say to him about his opinion or about him as, as a person, whatever. But you can't deny the content that he um, did, that he does. Um, um, like I said, I find some uh, uh, Crack Gamer stuff cool. Broken Games, I always um, enjoyed his stuff. And uh, half the time, uh, um, I never really even agreed with half the stuff. Um, I watched from Broken Games, but I watched it. I always thought Red Dragon was very, very um, informative. I just uh, just loved hearing his opinion and, and watching him bring news um uh to the scene and um i said stone fox i thought is is a bit entertaining even though i don't i disagree with half the stuff he says um who else do i like as far as um but that as the big guys i have a lot of i'm a more of a fan of like the, uh, the smaller guys mm-hmm. uh, the people that don't have um, thousands of subscribers like uh it was a um 
I like I like um, dealer stuff. He, he he gets a laugh out of me. I love um, Xbox four four eight podcast. He found a way to be uh, very creative with his stuff. Um, I like Nicodemus. Nicodemus is awesome. Um, I wish he had uh, more subscribers and more views. Um, I even like some of your stuff, Levon. Um, okay. Believe it or not, I, I do watch. I, I definitely do watch. Um, okay. I like. Uh, uh, I, I like watching King Dre's uh, Battlefield stuff. I don't know how often he does it, but he has a, a good sports cast now. Fami and T, um, I like when he uh, drops a video. Um, his videos are, are, are pretty good. I like the intro he got um, and some of the topics that he bring across. Um, generally, Arsenal, um, you, you'll see people that I like because I drop a like on everybody's videos that I like watching. And sometimes I dedicate a day like a Sunday or whenever my day's off, I'll look through, see who dropped a video and, and drop a like um, and, and watch, maybe even leave a comment. Um, I'm, I just started to check out, um, what's his name? Jay, is his name? Jay Gaming. The people, the one that they said replaced me on Weapon Wheel and stuff is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, Jack Move, um, Johnny, uh, his. Yeah, he's very funny. He's very funny, but, but let me tell you something. I actually never really cared or liked Jack Move um, like that. Like, I always, and this was before we even got along or anything like that. We bumped heads in the mm -hmm. past. Uh, but I, the one thing I always did, and um, I give him all the credit for this, I, I loved his intro when he okay. used to get on a cartoon, he got on a pony and that shit. And then <laughs> that he says, I thought it was awesome because it was like, and that, and when people ask me, oh, why did you call yourself the best bot and stuff like that? Cause Jack moved on, like I said, when we were all laughing at people being called ponies and stuff like that, and he sat there and he owned it. He owned it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm the pony commissioner. He owned it. And I was like, and I couldn't hate him. I couldn't dislike him. I was just like, yo, that is genius. That's, that's awesome. So calling him a pony is completely pointless. You can't do it. So, and when I was like, you know, and people were calling me an X-Bot and I'm like, I actually would rather be called an X-Bot versus a pony. It just seems like a more uh, manly name, a more a tech name. And I was like, cool, I'm going to own it. And I said, Xbox is the best box and I am the best box. If I'm going to be an X-Bot, I'm going to be the best bot. It had nothing to do about how good I am at games, had nothing to do. I was just, I was being called an X-Bot and I was like, if I'm going to be an X-Bot, I'm going to be the best bot and I'm going to own it. So shout out to uh, uh, Jack Move Johnny for doing that. Cause like I said, he owned the pony line. You know what I mean? He took it and um, I owned the best bot line. And there's some other names that people are being called now that somebody's just going to step up and they're going to, they're going to own it. Who's your favorite rappers and R&B artists? And I, I don't have favorite rappers in today's music. Cause this today's music is so diluted. I don't even, these people look like freaking, Oh my God. Um, like freaking straight out of mental asylum rappers now. Um, I, I, I rap, I stopped, I checked, I think I completely checked out of rap in like maybe 2012, 2014. The only person I guess, but I don't really consider him rap since he does multiple things like singing and stuff, I, is really Drake. He's the last thing I have on rap. You know, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, I guess I could hold on to them to an extent, but that's it. I, I, I'm stuck from, I'm still right now when it comes to rap, I'm stuck from 91 to like 2008. That's that's where I'm stuck at. But my favorite my favorite rapper of all time, greatest rapper, I feel is the greatest rapper of all time, greatest person of all time is Tupac, um, Nas, um, I like Eminem. Um, I like, and, and, and Eminem is not high on my list, but I do like his stuff. Um, I liked, uh, I liked Ja Rule when he was in his um, prime, 50 in his prime. Um, the backpack rappers, there's just a bunch of them. Kanye West from 2004 to 2008. Cent? Yeah, yeah, 50 Cent. Um, a game, game, game is in like my top three favorite rappers. Uh, Tupac, Nas, Game, and Kanye West would have remained here had he had he remained Kanye West. Like if you know what I mean. So, but um, yeah, I mean, I love music, and that's why when people make fun of my music. I don't think they make fun of my music because they think it's bad. It's just, it's not what they're used to. It, I don't sound like some of these idiots on pills or anything like that. I'm talking okay. about, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I rap like as if it's still 2008. Sometimes mm -hmm. I rap like it's 95. Sometimes I rap like it's 88. You, um, you rap on different styles, different times. Yeah, I mean, it's just I, I I can only relate to the music that I enjoy. I can't like if I I just why I don't put out music as often. I used to be like full time like rapping 
Um, but I stopped because I couldn't relate to the music that was out. And you get inspired by other people. You get inspired by some of the music you hear. And I couldn't get inspired by from the trash that's available now. Um, so I go back. And that's why when I'm rapping now, you don't hear me saying these rainbow bubblegum pop lines. I say things that people criticize me because I'm not uh what you call it i don't my wordplay isn't the greatest I, I i do everything simple i have simplistic lyrics i'm able to t say what i need to say in a simple manner and still make it sound good still still ho hopefully still let it hit you the same way without you guessing what i'm saying i try mm -hmm. to be as clear as possible uh all right uh, would you like to shout your channel out um, sure. Um, I'm Kid Smooth, and if you type in Kid Smooth in your YouTube search box, um, you might find more content about me than you will from me, even though I have a lot of content. Um, yeah, just uh, check me out. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Um, if you are subscribed to my videos, another watching, another liking. Um, I try to do it. I try to be, I try to be what YouTube is supposed to be, enter entertaining um you know what i mean and not caring um ah just just, yeah, just subscribe you know what i mean and, and i watch i watch everybody's stuff so mm -hmm. uh, there's a question sure what are five things you think the xbox one could, could do, do better? better um they can add youtube streaming um that mm -hmm. would be awesome um they can i wish there was like a dedicated share button like a screenshot button on um the xbox that would be awesome if they were i thought when they remodeled the controller that they were going to add that um but they didn't um it's nice to see that they got bluetooth um the xbox can how can i say this um five things i said the controller i said uh the youtube streaming um um I wish their accessories wasn't overpriced. Um, a lot of their accessories are overpriced. I wish that Connect could have survived um, in this generation. Um, mm -hmm. Like more Connect dedicated features, yeah, games. Um, it had a lot of potential. This Connect was like ten times the power of the the last Connect, and I was in, in love with the last Connect game. Uh, I just felt like I, I wish they were able to do something better. I wish they made a powerful console that didn't have power dedicated to the connect or i wish they or still could have had that power dedicated to the connect and still able to push out something um somebody asks uh can they add me on psn um you can but i'm not going to be on there um my psn id is kid nerd smooth one word k-i-d-n-e-r-d -E smooth s-m-o-o-v that's my playstation id when i return to playstation um I, I that my name won't change and I'll still have the games that I have digitally. So, you just tell us for like all the viewers that don't know, like how was Weapon Will made? I guess. How was Weapon Will made? Oh mm -hmm. uh, well, <laughs> last time I said how Weapon Will came up, uh, I was the last one that should have been uh, talking. To, um, honestly, I be uh, Broken Games can explain how Weapon Will was made. I can tell you how it was um brought to me. Yeah, um, I know uh, experience. BG hit me up and like, I don't know when it was. It was like early. Let, let's go back. Let's go back. I used to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk games. It was mm -hmm. the LTG podcast. It was me, E-Rock, Sad Man, Dan, a few other people. We had Bella and, and a few other people. I used to do developer interviews there. I used to just do PlayStation versus Xbox content there. And I had people like uh, Black Buster Critic on a podcast. I had Broken Games on like five episodes there. So those people who said, well, you don't come to your podcast. Kids. <laughs> like I haven't invited him to the uh, the writer's block, but he has been on uh, Let's Talk Games podcast uh, when I did it several times. And, um, and I think one time he hit me up and I, he said he's, he has an idea for a podcast where he's going to have rotational cast. He wants me to be a part of uh, that first episode and whatnot, and I said, sure, I do it. And I think because he wanted an Xbox guy, he wanted a PlayStation guy, he wanted a Nintendo guy, he wanted a PC guy. He was the main guy, and then he, his weapons were supposed to rotate, you know. 
And um, I remember uh, what he wanted. There was people that he wanted on that he would get on, whether they liked him or not, whether they was like the biggest Xbox fan. Well, he did not care. He wanted them on. And we've reached out uh, to a lot of people uh, to get them on. And, and a lot, some people didn't do it. Um, some people told me they will. Um, and I end up going, I, I was there for the first one. I don't think I was supposed to be a returnee. Um, I think I had a falling out on episode one with like Hardy and I think Black Bond about um, who else? I had about Crackdown. I think that was my falling out. And I wasn't on episode two. I was not on episode two. He had another, a guest round. I think I returned for episode three. And then he kind of, his rotation of people kind of just settled into what it was um which is with this uh, the cast that you see now it kind of just settled into that um which is a good mix of people you know you got red infamy who's who's awesome um you got um you got um jack move uh you got um i, I like when solid reps uh um, when solid rev is there um sometimes dark cloud um's there um you got obviously um um Heart eight and you got you know you got bond there um like i said it's you know weapon where it gets his like you know to me you talk about somebody that's like, get flax it get it it get its thing it gets his flax and, and stuff like that and sometimes it's it's it's, it's rightfully so sometimes it's self brought but i think honestly more than itself i don't think it's the, the podcast that's that has the issue i think it's really uh sometimes it could be the viewers it could be the community that refers to it um because if you watch some of the podcasts i mean a lot of podcasts, there's some some where there's great content. Obviously, the exception of my situation that happened, mm -hmm. um, that wasn't obviously a low point. It was not a, a a great you know look for a podcast. wasn't the greatest look for me um, yeah. or some other. It was just wasn't really pretty. So I don't even watch it. I generally rewatch the podcast. I, I don't think I uh, rewatched um, um, that mm -hmm. one. All right. Chad, do you have any questions? Okay. Do they have any questions? Does anybody got any questions? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man, shout out to King Dre. King Dre is, he, he's the head honcho of uh hard not gamers he's correcting us because we couldn't pronounce the names of the people that were um sadly um murdered um he said <laughs> he wanted to say for the record it's alton alton sterling you know i apologize to his family if i was uh mispronouncing his, his name and philando castillo i said philando correctly i just didn't say his last name mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he said gotta know these people <laughs> who i'm tweeting about alton in interviews so, so shout out um uh to king Dre. Uh, mm -hmm. for that um, Mr. Battlefield. That's what I call him. All right. No questions. All right, guys. Thank you for um, being this interview, Kicks Move. Thank you. Uh, anytime, man. Um, please rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel. See you guys later. Peace and expect more from yes. me, Lavon Kaysen. See y'all later. Shout out to Lavon. Subscribe to him, please. See y'all later. Peace. <laughs>